Dusk Cavens Brawler's Guild is a lot of fun, and completing the challenges gets you the title, Pit Fighter, and the Bruised Shredder Mount. Today I'll go over the fights to give you an idea of what to expect. This is the Alliance version, I'll make one for Horde later on once I level up a character there. As you can expect, strong, tanky classes and specs with self-healing will do very well here. It won't be easy, but much easier than doing it as a mage, for example. You don't need to be fully decked out in epics to complete it, but I don't think it's doable in fresh level 60 gear either. The first part is getting to the Brawler's Guild. For Alliance, the entrance is located at the southwest corner of the Dwarven District in Stormwind City. Go inside the building with two Goblin Bodyguards and turn in the quest to the Shady Dealer. Purchase the item Sharpen Talent for 50 gold. You'll need this to start the questline. Don't worry, you'll earn back the money by doing the fights. Continue inside, click the portal, and you'll get ported to Old Iron Forge, a custom zone underneath Iron Forge. You'll find a vendor here with potions and a repair function, which you might need a lot. I know I did. Continue up the stairs and you'll find the first quest. Accept it and you'll be ported into the arena. Now, the first few fights are pretty simple. There aren't many mechanics you, you really need to keep an eye out for. It's just a matter of killing them before they kill you. Yes, that describes all fights, I know, but there's really not much more to it at first. I forgot the exact order of the first few fights, but they include the following. One of the first is Terror Beak, a large elite bird. This one shouldn't give you any issues, because if it does, I highly doubt you can take on the rest. Kill it and then take the portal back out. There's also Nula, a female orc warrior who just does damage and not much more. Don't die, kill her, and move on to the next one. There's Splosh, a green slime which summons clones of itself. Having some sort of cleave or AoE to dispatch of them is very useful here. Next up is Jenny Awesome, a night elf hunter and her wolf pet Fuzzle. The pet can deal a lot of damage, but as you can see here, it dies quickly, as does she. Following opponent is Ming Yong, a panda monk. It knocks you up and back and casts regrowths. Simply interrupt or dispel them. Sometimes it randomly bugs and resets, as you can see here. After Mr. or Mrs. Panda, you get to fight a big white bear, Lozo. He puts some disease on you, infected by it. It's a dot which also increases physical damage taken by 10%. But the main thing to look out for here is Stomp. He'll jump up and smack down on you, causing decent damage. Because I'm in tank stance, it doesn't do that much, but I've seen people really get whacked by this, so run out of it if you can't take the hits. And now we get to what is probably the most difficult fight in the entire questline, at least it was for me, Jerva, a witch who frequently spawns ghosts. These ghosts explode after 5 seconds, one-shotting you if you're caught in them. The main strategies, as far as I know, are either zerking the ghosts when they pop and bringing her down when they're not, or kiting all the time, which is dangerous because there really isn't much room for error here. The arena is very small, so you can't run far and their explosion radius covers most of it. I'm not going to lie, I've died dozens of times here before finally taking her down. My final strategy consisted of making sure I had a cooldown for each ghost and kiting them if I didn't, while damaging her as much as possible in the meantime. Oh, and beware, she doesn't immediately despawn when you die, so if you pick up the quest too fast again, you'll be facing her twice. Needless to say, you won't last long. After Jerva, the next few fights feel ridiculously easy and aren't much of a challenge, honestly. You'll face Turu'u, a Draenei Paladin who casts Radiance, which you can just avoid by turning around and not facing him. He also casts Holy Lights, which you can just interrupt or stun him, but it doesn't heal much in any case. The following opponent is Nibbler, a poisonous snake who I've heard many people had problems with, although I didn't find it difficult at all because I've got increased movement speed and self-healing. What he does is put down poison clouds, just move out of them. He spits acid, which hits for a decent amount. As you can tell here, he moves slowly, so if you just weave in and out, doing damage and then retreating from the poison cloud, you can probably kill him without issue. Abomination Limbcatcher is next. Oh nope, there's a Jerva here too, from another player's previous attempt. A lucky intervention from a vigilant game master saved me another repair bill. Anyway, the Abomination throws down a poison bottle which does 350 damage per second. Don't stand in it. 
is also pretty slow and is basically another nibbler tactics wise. And then we get to the final boss, Finkel Zinc, a gnome engineer who casts. Oh no, wait, there's another Jerva. Fortunately, the GM was keeping an eye out again. Anyway, Finkel Zinc has a few abilities. He immediately casts a curse on you, which transforms you into a leper gnome, reducing your damage by 40 and your movement speed by 20%. He casts this once in the beginning and then rarely throughout the fight. He also puts down proximity mines, which explode when you come near them. Neither of these are an issue, his alarm bots are. These bots are similar to Jerva's ghosts in that you need to kill them within a few seconds or something nasty happens. In this case, they'll summon a mechanical yeti, which millies you hard, or if you go out of range, they cast a frost breath which hits for 45k. No amount of damage reduction abilities are going to save you, perhaps a fortifying resolve combined with dispersion, but you'd be toast for the next one anyway. The main gimmick here, I thought, was killing the alarm bots before they can summon the yeti, and killing Finkel Zinc before you run out of cooldowns. I tried this many, many times, but with no success. Due to the nature of a monk's damage, single target really isn't strong unless you have some cooldowns, and you are very, very vulnerable to missing or getting parried, which happens often because expertise is very rare to come by. If you miss one jab or don't have a cooldown for one alarm bot, it's pretty much game over. You can't kill the yetis, so once one is up, you'd have to keep dodging the frost breads, proximity bombs and other shit. I think you could also do it by using the proximity mines, trigger them when an alarm bot is near them and the bots take damage too, adding to your burst. A pretty frustrating fight, honestly, if tackled head on. But the trick here is to simply not trigger the alarm bots. Don't hit them, don't do any sort of AoE, just ignore them and focus on Finkel Zinc. As a monk, that was pretty impossible due to single target spells triggering an AoE explosion. So I went holy and just casted away at Finkel, to great success. It took ages, but as you can tell, the alarm bots just stood there and weren't getting triggered. No yetis, no problem. Turn in the final quest, get your final medallions, go to the vendor and buy the Battle Lord's insignia, which starts a quest to get you all the nice rewards. The Pit Fighter title, Goblin Shredder Mount, Dread Pirate, Bind on a Count Ring, 4000 Honor, 20 Gold and a Tabard. All in all, Duskhaven's Brawler's Guild was really fun and satisfying to complete, despite the bugs and sometimes wonky mechanics. I can highly recommend it, it was totally worth it. That's all I've got for today. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it for free, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment below. It really helps with the algorithm and would be greatly appreciated. See you in the next video.